everybody, and welcome to our latest haul video here for Indie Film Cafe. I'm your old pal, the Moo Cow, otherwise known as Pauly Persenza, and I am joined all the way out from L.A. by... Jonathan Moody. Woohoo! All right. Woo so, as you all know by now, we have a monthly haul video talking about all the wonderful little goodies we managed to get our hooves on. Uh dvds and blu-rays and um so this is the part of the month i always love it we get to show each other what we got I, I you know i love it too and i'm so angry because like i've got i've got ones backed up all the way to like april and i like i really want to show all of them like i want to show all like 90 or whatever i have right now but I've got to right. wait. I've got to wait. I can't this, wait for you to this see way. We them. definitely have enough for shows for the next few months, as opposed to one two hour long show. You know what I mean? Right. No. Yeah. Yeah. And then who knows if the next month I'll have any, you know, like we don't exactly. know. That's the problem. And it was actually Paul's suggestion that if I do start getting a few of them, I, I, I keep them in the bank um, for because you were doing you were, side. you were doing it yourself. You were getting 30 yep. or, or you're getting more than 30 and keeping some of them to yourself so well we we started to get the 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 down low on the dollar store dollar tree we we got an idea when stuff's rolling in well yeah um so just so people know the dollar tree is actually pretty much like at least once a month uh putting them out as their like weekly wow so right, they are right. getting a bunch new each month i don't know like what you know prompted them to like do, i mean i'm not complaining i'm just saying no, i don't know what great. i don't know what prompted them to do it um i'm just happy that they're doing it so there you go all there right you, you ready okay so we'll start off with the blu-rays and traditionally i usually go with the good blu-rays and then i talk about the stinky ones so um first the good ones we're going to start off with one that uh was a surprise i'd forgotten this had come out but it is the Godfather Coda. And what this is, is this is the re-edit of um, uh, the, the Godfather 3. And um, basically what happened is, is that, uh, you know, the, the director ended up going back in and, and changing a few things and uh, altering some stuff and adding a few things. And I guess you could call it sort of the director's cut, you know? And, right. Um, I actually... I actually already watched it. And it's it's much better than the original. Really? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's really good. I'm All right. Pretty, pretty All right. I'll have to it. look. I'll have to check it, that out. It starts off. Very, it starts off much stronger than the original one does. I wonder if they have that on 4K too. Like, because you know, um, a lot of the Blu-rays are and and they're turning into 4Ks are are doing you know are transferring like the newest stuff or whatever, like the newest mm -hmm. um, editions and everything. So, I mean, that would be pretty cool yeah so i mean you, there's all bundled usually out there but this was a standalone and um you know it's got all kinds of extras in there it's got stuff from francis ford coppola in fact he does an introduction talking about why he decided to do this and what's going on with it so i love his commentary on the the first guy Apollo, like period oh, yeah. like it's just um i mean he knows uh the fact that he actually didn't want uh like he like i mean there was a, they, like the they didn't want they were almost gonna fire him you know, like right. have you have you ever seen the movie on um, the uh, kid stays in the picture? You yeah. seen that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's yeah, that's a great documentary about Robert Evans. But like Robert Evans was the one who saved freaking Godfather. So, you know, as much love him or hate him, because he does have like, you know, he is a producer. You know, like he's kind of a dick at times, but he has to be. Yeah, no, 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 no. Thank God for for Robert Evans, because uh, yeah, we, Godfather's like one of the greatest American films of all time. Exactly. So I got that. And then a couple other really good ones we also have, because I finally got this on Blu-ray, The Big Lebowski. Woohoo! Nice. Got to get The Big Lebowski. And this one's got um, bonus features like The Dude's Life, The Dude Abides. Uh, there's a, a 10 years after sort of retrospective. Um, there's this thing about the dream sequence, a making of, and it's got all kinds of extra little bits and pieces. Uh, speaking of commentary from before... The Cohen brothers never have done a commentary track. Have never done one, I know, and I no. don't know if it's like them personally. If they just don't feel like they feel like everything they say are in the documentaries or something, but they never do a commentary, and it kind of just is sort of sad. 
And I kind of wish that they would just take Jeff Bridges and say, hey, would you mind talking about it, you know, and doing a commentary because fans would love it, you know? But maybe, maybe that's the thing. Like the Cone Brothers, I don't actually I think there have been commentary tracks on their on their Blu-rays and stuff, but it's always from like the camera guy or somebody else. Mm. Like okay. you know, yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. So and then I started going back and getting some Blu-rays of movies that I already had in DVD when they pop in and they're available. So, for example, we also have 30 Days of Night, mm-hmm. which I always thought was a really cool vampire flick. And, I, um, I watched some of it, the like a few, uh, like a, a couple months ago, you know, with oh, a yeah. friend, we were watching it. And then uh, we get, I got distracted and had to do a bunch of stuff. But uh, it was... I mean, it was pretty cool what I saw. I and mean, Josh Hartnett, I mean, should Josh I feel Hartnett's like he, really good. I know, and I feel like he sort of fell off the like, you know, I think he was in uh he was in uh the penny um um the penny show, uh but the I'm, I'm blinking on the name, the the Frankenstein and um you know what I'm talking about? Um uh Penny um Oh Penny Dreadful. Penny Dreadful. He was in the Penny Dreadful show. Right. right and right. Uh, unfortunately, he kind of um, uh, fell off, you know, fell off the face of the earth, earth in feature films, you know, and stuff. So, well, we'll see if we can't grab him for sick flick productions. How awesome would that be? <laughs> one day, man. One day. <laughs> one day. Hey, it, if you can years. get, we can get Melissa George. I would be extremely happy. Oh. She's gorgeous and awesome. Um. So speaking of another movie that I've had for a long time in DVD, but not on Blu-ray, finally, I got Prince of Darkness, one of my favorite John Carpenter films. And um, this that is just, a collector's edition. That just came out on 4K, just like yep. literally like a couple weeks ago. Nice, nice, oh. nice. And it's got the auto commentary with John Carpenter and new interviews and all kinds of cool stuff. Nice. And then finally, um, you know, every now and again, I do like to try and get some of my favorite TV shows on Blu-ray as well, if I can manage to find them. And so I managed to get season one of Dollhouse on Joss Whedon. Nice. Yeah, um, I, they only I made two show. seasons of that show, right? So yeah, you only yeah. need one more. And it's a shame because it was a good series, you know. Well, it's better. It's better that they got two seasons other than Firefly, which only got one season. I know. You know I know. I know. It's sad. just. I think. I think the people um, who, you know, the powers that be wanted it to be another Buffy and it's, it's not really the same thing as Buffy. So there was some disappointment there and it's a shame because I think by itself, it was a decent series. Yeah. You know. um, there you go. So now we're going to devolve into some of the lesser movies. Um, are these like po- possible blue cheese movies? Possible. Some of these are, are not that bad. Some of them are like um, Fangs of the Living Dead. Here's a movie that mostly uh it doesn't have a very good reputation but it's mostly because the only thing you ever really saw was this shitty ass version of it the shitty ass public domain version where everything is cut off and terrible this is all cleaned up and um, it's supposed to look 100 percent better and right. that's, that that can help save a movie right then and there mm-hmm. same thing with a couple of these other ones um this is a double feature we've got Night of the Sorceress, which is actually a pretty cool, interesting film, and The Lorelei's Grass, which is probably uh, one that I may be doing for um, Forgotten Horror Classics. Actually, I guess you could really think both of these are kind of Forgotten Horror Classics. They're actually both decent films. Um, they're not great films, but they're not stinkers either. They're kind of in between, but they're they're kind of cool in their own individual ways. So Awesome. Yeah, they'll be, they'll be nice. Um, the next two, on the other hand, are definitely stinkers. Um, this is one that popped out of nowhere and I immediately wanted it for our, um, uh, uh, what the fuck Fridays, but it's probably going to save it for, for blue cheese, but it is Achi and Suspect. This is a weird animated film where everybody deals with poo, like poo currency, poo stuff poo collectibles there's poo people everywhere there's all kinds of weird poo stuff going on sounds like something jackie would like (laughs) don't ask it's weird um so i got that when it came up and then uh the last one this is definitely definitely stinker and definitely blue cheese ready got one of the blood rain movies and it is blood rain the third reich nice (laughs) 
Is Uwe, is Uwe Boll the director of that one? Of course. Uwe, oh, Boll, Uwe Boll. Always ready for, for a crappy Uwe Boll film. Yep. Was that it? That's it for Blu-ray. All right. Well, it's my turn. Oh, boy. Um, I've got a different collection of films uh, for you. Uh, first one I think I told you already I got, um, which I'm kind of excited about. Um, so my buddy Eric uh, Spudik, uh, you know, has his own um, company called uh, Spudik's Movie Empire where he sells stuff. And I think I've talked about him before because I bought yeah. lots of stuff and I'm going to buy something next week. And you know what I mean? Like I'm always going to buy stuff from him because um, he's just always got a bunch of just junk that I he's would love. You know, yeah. And he gets him. I mean, it gives me a great, decent price for them for honestly. And so I got Life Itself on Blu-ray. Oh, and okay. this is uh, yeah. the Roger Ebert uh, right. movie. That's um, cool. I wouldn't mind life. checking that out. I actually watched it. And uh, considering I haven't watched any of the other things, but I, I really badly, I think I watched that like one of the nights that like I came back home, you know, I was like, I got to watch this, you know. Um, and uh, I thought it was it was really good. Um, it was heartbreaking to see him in the uh, state that he was, yeah. you know, the at, toward yeah. the end. And they showed a lot of that. Mm. And it was sort of like I, I kind of wanted to see more about his time with Siskel. And they showed they showed a good amount of time about that, you know, found out more information about them than I even thought I would get, you know. So I liked it. It was a really yeah, good documentary. A good yeah. He he was he was definitely a good and he won like a Nobel Peace Prize or something, you know, like oh, or whatever. He's yeah, like and so he always gets mad because he's like, I'm the one with like you know that's done that stuff you know like i'm the one and and siskel's always the one who gets all like the praise you know like or whatever he has the name first of siskel and ebert it's never ebert and siskel right, right. you know it should be technically you know because ebert should come first you know um alphabetically um and then uh i had to get this i've not opened it i haven't even watched it yet but i want to check it out i got a walmart um on my birthday um I found it for like six bucks at Walmart, and that was Three from Hell, the Rob Zombie uh, third movie, you know, the De Devil's Rejects sequel, you know, kind of thing. Right. And I wanted to see it. Um, I'm not mainly because I have all the other, you know, uh, Rob Zombie movies. You know, I kind of want to. You're a completist. Uh, yeah. If if I, you know, unless the, the people are just terrible, and I don't want, you know, I like whatever. If I'm collecting their movies, I, I sort of want to have all of them if I can get it, you know. And so I'm gonna I'm gonna watch it. I have no real high expectations, but it is Sid Haig's last movie, so or whatever, right, like right. last time with Rob Zombie. So I I know he wasn't in it for very long, but um, I do want to see you know see Captain Spaulding one last time. Uh, it's it's funny, Kyle. I'm I'm very much the opposite. You know, I mean. If it doesn't hit a certain bar for me, I'm not going to, you know, like Halloween. I love, love, love the original Halloween. I think it's one of the best films ever made. None of the other films have <laughs> ever come even close to that level. So Not I'm even Halloween not, 3? Come on now. Definitely not Halloween 3. <laughs> Although that's probably more entertaining than some of the other ones. Yeah, well, at least, I mean, at least they knew that they weren't going to go with Michael Myers, so they are just going to make something really just wacky and out there. And, and it, it did feel like, even though it wasn't John Carpenter, it felt like it was John Carpenter-esque. So I liked Halloween right. 3. Right. But uh, yeah, uh, Rob Zombie didn't do a great, great Halloween 1 and 2, I don't think. But, you know, whatever. You know, he tried. He tried to make his own Halloween, and I I commend him for that. And I have both uh, both of those. So I have almost... I think I don't even know I mean, one thing I might be missing, you know, of the Rob Zombie stuff. So all I got to say is stop remaking great films. No, that's the whole point is you have to make the remake the great films. No, you, know? you have to remake bad films to make them better. You don't take a great film that you'll never touch. You're never going to make it as good as, as John Carpenter. Never, ever, ever. Right. But like the point is that it's actually, I don't know. You're right. You're right. But <laughs> The movies, the um, the was it the uh, the bad movies and make them better. That's sort of, I mean, nobody's gonna make the remake the room and make it better. I mean, unless yeah. you're going in a completely different direction, unless you do an all puppet version of Halloween, I would watch that. <laughs> all puppet version of Gone with the Wind. I would watch that, even <laughs> though I can't stand Gone with the Wind, but I'd watch a puppet version. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, you would. All right. Next one up is uh, a movie that it says from the creator of Final Destination, but I think he just produced it. I don't think he wrote it or direct. I know he didn't direct it, but I uh, I did talk to him. It's Jeffrey Reddick's uh, like produced film. It's called The Call, and it's got Lynn Shea, Tobin Bell, and Chester Rushing. So oh, okay. I'm really excited for this. Um, uh, of all the movies and and uh jeffrey reddick has said really great things about it to me personally you know said that's a great film when i showed him that i got it so um he's actually very honest <laughs> with me you know so i i am looking forward to this um and the last technically three i guess are together are are the same thing so um i got a dvd that i'm going to talk about later that I got on my birthday and I sent it to the director and showed him. And apparently he was not happy with like the movie itself. Right. Like okay. he didn't like the movie and I'll talk about that later, but he, so I said, um, you know, I, I said, I'd like to get a couple movies from you. Let's send you some money. Um, and so he sent me Blu-rays of three of his movies. Um, so there's a double feature of reunion, for, uh, reunion of terror and spring break massacre. Um, now, uh, I've spring, heard of Spring Break Massacre. Spring Break Massacre stars Reggie Bannister and Linnea Quigley. Linnea Quigley, and, yeah. yeah. and Reunion of Terror has. Oh, I didn't even realize he. Oh my God, he signed it. I didn't even notice that. I was like, because I was kicking myself, saying, "Why didn't I get him to sign it?" He fucking did. He signed one, so I know he didn't sign the other one. Uh, but anyway, he uh, yeah. So Michael Hoffman is the director, and he's not super duper proud of Spring Break Massacre. I think he's sort of proud of Reunion of Terror, and he loves okay. loves loves the movie that he sent me, which was an extra because this is all I asked for, right? And he said, "Oh, I'm sending you an extra movie," and I was like, "All right," and that was Girls Gone Dead, the unrated <laughs> producer, <laughs> director's cut version. This is his nice. cut. Uh, well, it says uncensored producer's cut, but this is his cut. This is the one that he's proud of and everything. The other versions, which I don't have yet, which I kind of want to have as completest. I want to have the other versions too as well. And I can compare and contrast or whatever, Does this but have I don't like have them. I, think boobage? I don't know. Maybe it's under, oh, both of them are unrated. So I don't know if there's extra boobage or not, but this was a movie. I will tell you this, that uh, Jackie actually auditioned for. In my um, wow. in my my house, you know, we were I was friends with Michael, and he was saying he was casting for Girl, Girls Gone Dead. This is how long ago it was, like 2010, and she had just done the dare with me. And I said, uh, "Would you like to, um, you know, uh, audition for my friend's film?" He, she auditioned. She was great, by the way. She did a fantastic job. He was pretty much going to give her the, the the movie on the spot. However, all the parts required nudity which she won't yeah. do and understandably you know and so she, i if he told me that before i did not i did not hear it you know did not know and so i i said oh i'm sorry i didn't know that and they're like oh it's okay well you know so i don't know what i forgot what part she uh she went for i, I want to rewatch this sometime and kind of see but it's a it's pretty cool to have the uh it's got um and it's got beetlejuice in it the guy from uh, the howard stern show Right, you know, right. The, yeah, the black guy from the Howard Stern show. So it's you know such a goofy uh, group of movies, and I just I really badly want to want to watch all of them sometime. I just haven't had an opportunity yet, but I will. There you go. And that's all my Blu-rays. So off to your all DVDs. Right. So first group of DVDs. A lot of these are going to come from the dollar store, but not all of them. Um, in fact, the very first one is not this. Do you want to do is, all yours? Do you want to do all yours together, or do you want to do switch back? Oh no, no, no! I'm I'm doing half. <laughs> okay, you're doing half, and then I do half. Okay, good. Right, right, right. All right, right. perfect. Um, so the very first one is actually from Book Exchange Band in, in Norfolk, and this is a film that I remember when it came out. It was considered a train wreck, so I never saw it. But I, since I saw it there, and it was like two bucks or something, it's Robert Zemeckis's Beowulf. Nice. And this is the one that's got Anthony Hopkins, John Malkovich, Robin Wright, Brendan Geeson, Crispin oh, Glover, <laughs> and Angelina Jolie. What a strange oh, cast. And it's Robert Zemeckis, who I'm sorry. I mean, I know he's a decent director, but 
you have no business directing great literature, Robert. I'm sorry. It's just well, not you. Uh, yeah. I mean, he's he's the director of Back to the Future and Used Cars. Like, he's a great director, right. but he's a great director at what he does, you know? Like, right. Yeah. It's just stick not to what you're good at, thing. you know? But I, like I said, I heard it was a train wreck, so I thought I'd grab it. But well, moving on. I, I have to say this, though. It's, it's kind of like, uh, to me, it's kind of like Terry Gilliam, who I love to death. But doing like Man of La Mancha, come on, you know, like I don't, no, I don't really no. see that, see that. And I tried watching it because they did actually finally film that thing, and I was just like, you know, he's a great director, but not that. This is no, he needs to do Man of La Mancha, or is it Don Quixote? Well, it's, it's I think, uh, it's it's the same. Uh, well, it's Don Quixote, but it's like I don't know if that's the title or not. Um, I thought it was, uh, er, I don't know. Um. He did. I seen it. I, saw I remember it, 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 it. The it man who killed the man who killed Don Quixote, yeah. which was pretty much Man of La Mancha, yeah. right? Like you know. Um, so it was, you know, it was, it was, it wasn't good, you know. And I was kind of disappointed because I think it, had they been able to finish it the, originally with Johnny Depp and everything, I think it would have been a lot better. But unfortunately, oh dear. Well, anyway, moving on. So now I got some dollar store stuff. So. First one we have is a movie called Abattoir. Nice. And it looks like this is from Saw People, uh, director of Saw 2, 3, and 4. Yeah, Darren um, Lynn Bozeman. Yeah, Darren Lynn Bozeman. And uh, it looks like this has got a special making of. So that's nice. kind of fun. Yeah. Next one is one I remember you got last month, and it is Dark Hall. Did I get that? I... You got that last month. Yeah, okay. I remember. It's the one with Tom Sizemore yes okay never mind yep 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 <laughs> that's so sad i've been seeing so many movies i just keep forgetting <laughs> you know I, I hear you um next one is from the producer of the conjuring and it's called the curse of la lorna which is the crime woman you know yeah i watched yeah. it yeah i tried to watch it yeah oh dear <laughs> yeah it's not it's kind of boring I, I think you'll be, I think if I'm bored by it, I think you'll be bored by it. Cause you know, I love those kind of, kind it's, of movies and, and everything. It's entirely possible. But Next it does have, have, it does. Hey, it does have, I believe it does have the chick from freaks and geeks in it. If I'm correct. Okay. As the lead. Okay. So uh, let me look that up. But yeah, it's um, curse of La Lorna. Um, uh, let me look that up. But like I, yeah, Linda Cardellini is the is the lead. So um, okay. that in itself is is worth watching. I think honestly. Next one is the movie called Tower of Blood, and I don't know a whole lot about this other than it's directed by Corbin Timbrook, and it looks like it's somebody goes into an abandoned apartment building and there's uh, it's haunted or there's spooks or something like that. Um, cool. Next is a twofer. Um, actually, it's a threefer. There's three movies in here. It's uh, Remote Viewing, okay. and it's um, The Veil, and Phantom from Space, and a bonus movie called Chronicles of the Paranormal Psy Factor. Oh. There you go, hosted by Dan Aykroyd. So I guess it's a... Uh, documentary? It's like a, yeah, documentary. Cool. With Dan Aykroyd? That's neat. Yeah, yeah. So that's kind of fun. He's really into um, like paranormal, like alien shit. You know, like I would, yeah, I would yeah. definitely, I would definitely have a fun time chatting with him if I ever, like, he's got to be on our IFC spotlight someday. <laughs> Next, we have one movie called Heaven and Hell. Nice. Heaven's in trouble, and there's one man who can help. And let's see here. This is uh, directed, I can't see who's directing it, unfortunately. I, I can't tell who's in there. Um, but I think, let's see here. Uh, gosh, I'm not even sure who's in this. I actually got that one too, but not in this hall. Okay, yeah, I think this is. I think Burt Ward is in this. Nice. <laughs> yeah, Burt Ward is definitely in this. So there you go, mark of quality right there. Robin. Mm -hmm. Hey, he was in a he was in a J.R. Bookwalter movie, so you know, mark of quality. <laughs> and he was in uh, Robo Chick. It's true. It's true. So, uh next another dollar store one we have a movie called bloodshot nice directed by drew i Thomas, think i got that too with skylar day and kate french 
Got to like Kate French. I don't know um, who Kate French is. Oh, uh, she's a she's an actress. She's you'd like her. She's blonde. Okay. She's been in a bunch of stuff. Uh, next we have Blackwood. Nice. Can't outrun fear. And uh, this is actually another BBC movie, um, but it's actually a movie movie. It's not a documentary. Not a documentary. Then this one came out of nowhere. And in fact, it's one of those things where the lettering is so dark. I can't, and it's all on dark. I can't really read it, but the front part says Jack goes home. So okay. I think this is some kind of a Jack the Ripper kind of flick. Um, but um, it's not, uh, let's see. It's, um, oh, one of the Culkin brothers is in this. Oh, nice. Rory, Rory, Rory Culkin. Yeah. 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 He's, he's kind of hit hard times lately, you know. I think they all have. Uh, speaking of hitting hard times, not really, but I, I kind of poked fun at her a little bit. The next movie is Voices from the Stone with Amelia Clark. <laughs> no more dragons for her to ride around on. I know. Like after Game of Thrones, what is she going to do? I know. I know. It's kind of a shame. But, um, you know, she's super, super gorgeous and she's a decent actress. So I'm going to check this out and give her a of shot. Of course. I watched, uh, I watched movies with her, like, you know, just to give you know whatever give it give a shot and sure. sometimes sure. they're great and sometimes they're they're not so great so you know all right just a couple more for this group and the next one is the unrated undead lucy lou version of rise and nice. uh lucy lou's yet another actress i'll watch just about anything in she's wonderful uh directed written and directed by sebastian uh, gutierrez and michael chiklis is in there as well and james Durston. Next is a very interesting looking one. Uh, again, it's, the, the cast looks fun. It's a movie called 88. Yep, I have that. It's got Catherine Isabel and Christopher Lloyd, of all people. Um, Jesse McCartney, April Mullen, Michael Ironside. So I saw that cast and I was like, okay, that should be fun. Uh, let's see. Next, we have a movie called I'll Take Your Dead. Uh, that's a Shout Studios film directed by Chad Archibald. And I don't really know anybody in here. Um, so we'll see. It's another dollar store movie. Just two more. This is another one that um, has the cast. You know, when I see a really interesting cast, no matter how bad or it's going to be, I, I want to grab it. But this right. is called Dark is the Night. And it's oh, got... I, 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 I... I don't know if I bought that already and then showed it or something, or I have it in one of my halls, but yeah. You might have. It's Marissa Tomei, Timothy Oliphant, Charlie, uh, Charlie Plummer, and Mary Ellenos. So yep. that looks good or bad. Or Either bad. way, I win. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and maybe. then the last one from the first group is a movie called Burning Kisses. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I don't really know who's in this one. Liam Graham and Allison Walker. Richard Mellick, don't know them. Echo Bridge movie. Uh, once, once another person with the, or another company that's a mark of quality, right there. There you go. <laughs> Outstanding. All, All right. right, your turn. Tag, you're it. All right. Um, oh boy, this is gonna be fun. All right, here's my. I think Brain Guy is uh, pretty entertained by our movie selections so far. Hold on a second. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Come on, Moody fans, paid a All quarter right. to see this. All right. So, uh, first up, um, oh, you're gonna laugh at this because I did go to the Dollar Tree and I did buy all of the Viking movies, ah, uh, documentary yeah. ones. You know, so I got. I bet uh, they're fun. And then I got oh, was that Blood of the Viking? Something like that. Uh, it's called. Blood of the Viking, Last of the Vikings. Then there's Viking War, uh, the last battle of the Vikings. So it's, it seems like it has to have blood or last in all the titles. And, and then in Blood of the Vikings, First Blood. So <laughs> there you go. Uh, First Blood? So it's like a Viking Rambo movie? How awesome would that be? <laughs> that would be. <laughs> we should shoot that movie. A Viking with PTSD. <laughs> I would Mike watch Bo. Bike Bow. Yeah, I like it. Um, 
The next is another documentary. So I'm going to show a bunch of documentaries, actually, that I got from the Dollar Tree. Um, the next one is Jedi Junkies. I mean, huh. I, I, I don't have any problem with the girl with the, you know, her shirts off, basically, you know, uh, in her underwear. Uh, stars, uh, it's got like um, Peter Mayhew, Ray Park, Olivia Munn. It's a documentary. Uh, and it's got filmmaker commentary and stuff, too. Really, you don't really see that in documentaries because like a documentary already is a commentary. So when they have commentaries, it's interesting, you know, right? Sure. Um, so next is the Death Star. And it's all of these are rattling around in there. So I don't like that. But, you know, it's probably scratched. But uh, the Death Star is a, uh, it basically it says, unlock the secrets of the first star, the, the first stars were, how the first stars were born. So this talks about how like stars were made and, and stuff. And I'm actually kind of into that stuff lately, you know, uh, you know, I'm into like looking up at the stars and shit and seeing, you know, wondering more about it, so. Uh, then the real jungle book animals. So this is all about um, the jungle, I guess, and the animals that live there, uh, like, you know, lions and tigers and bears. Oh, my. So I'm kind of excited for that. And then beast legends. Oh, my oh, God. Yeah, yeah. Yes. I saw that one out there. Yes. I, mean, I almost got it. It's got like griffins and um, other creatures that uh, are just uh, creatures of legend. So and then mystical so critters. I've, I've, I felt with that half, it would be a perfect thing to end on, you know, before I start going into my man eater series that I got. And oh boy, did I get a lot, uh, generally. So, uh, Eric Sputic got me a bunch uh, of ones. And so, I'm going to show the ones here that he got me. Um, so, one is called the hive, looks like, uh, like bees or something, you know, um, or some kind of hives okay. and, you know, whatnot. This looks pretty good. Uh, nobody, I don't think anybody really famous um do you know a tom wopel uh or a charles well no nope nope nobody famous in this one which is always kind of a bummer because like a lot of them do have famous people in it then there's hellhounds you know i'm kind of excited about that it, it's like i guess devil dogs you know hellhound um shark swarm this is two and a half hours long. Oh my god! And it has the most amazing cast in it. It's got Daryl Hannah, John Schneider, Armand Asante, and F. Murray Abraham. I mean, <laughs> how can you not have like watch a shark movie with all four? I could watch it probably for two and a half hours Good watching. God, them. they're going to be chewing the scenery as much as the sharks are. Probably uh, another one that stars uh, Robert England actually is Black. Sp uh black swarm um mm. i think this is a bee one i don't know what the other one was maybe ants or something but this is a killer bees so black swarm um when robert england is in movies these days he usually just plays like a side character or something even if his name's over everybody sure the one that we're excited about because i think you and i are going to do this as a uh episode um for man eaters is yeti you know so i've been Yay. excited about that have you seen this yet not yet. Oh boy, we're both going to be in for a treat then, because neither have I. Nice, uh, nice, nice. Then another uh, one is a wolf movie. It is a hybrid, I guess, half oh. wolf, half man movie, and I'm kind of excited for that. But that's also another. Um, well, one. could what? be. Maybe it's different. Maybe it's half wolf, half clam, or <laughs> half wolf, half carrot. Well, you never know. But it's got wolf just clam. How would you not want to see a movie called Wolf Clam? No idea. I probably would. I probably would. It would end up on Indie Film Cafe for sure. A um, werewolf with like a clam shell, you know, is protecting. So it looks like Justine Bateman is one of the stars. Oh, God. Um, Tinsel Corey and Corey Monteith. And I've heard of Corey Monteith, but I don't know really who he is. Um, yeah. What has Justine Bateman been doing for the last 35 years? Being in sci-fi movies, apparently. Good golly. All right. So I got a triple uh, triple feature. Now, I already own one of them, but I got two, basically, for the price of one, which is one's uh, Blood Monkey, uh, huh. one is Man Eater, and then the other one is In the Spider's Web. So all different kind of things, but these are the Man Eaters here. By the way, if you don't, guys don't know this, if you haven't been following uh, Indie Film Cafe, today, which is Monday, 
you know, this will actually be Wednesday that this comes out. But Monday, uh, we started uh, the Man Eater series, and we're going to be doing that two uh, two episodes a uh, month. Uh, yeah, two episodes a month for twenty four episodes, if not more. We might, if I can watch all twenty seven. We're doing all twenty seven. I think I can at least watch twenty six. So we're going to try to do all of them. Uh, you know, because they're a whole big series, but. There you and go. You may as well do two a month because you know you eat one man, it's just you're just gonna be hungry again two weeks later. So exactly. There you go. Um, and then the another triple feature is Bohemoth, Roadkill, and Ferocious Planet. Now I have I have Roadkill, which is I guess about a, a bird that kills people like on the road or whatever. And then uh, I do not have, I did not have Bohemoth and I do not have Ferocious Planet. So excited about that. Um, they all look cheesy and fun. And then the last one, which I got three out of six, you know, there's a six pack right here, uh, nice. which kind of is a bummer because they have like, each one is on like two discs, you know, and so, so it probably loses a little bit of quality, you know, when it does that, but um, Swamp Devil, Sea Beast, Rise of the Gargoyles, Wyvern, Sand Serpents, and Roadkill. So I have Roadkill like three times now, <laughs> you know. But um, Rise of the Gargoyle, I didn't have. a lot have. of Roadkill. Yeah, that is. Rise of the Gargoyles, Sand Serpents, and Swamp Devil, I did not have. The other other three I did. Right. I have that Wyvern. Is all I got. I know you have, you have Wyvern because I think you got that in LA when we, uh, uh, when we were in LA doing, yeah, I uh, think so. you know, uh, at Big Lots. So, all right, your your next half. All right, my next group. Oh, let's pull them out over here. Um, so once again, we are going to start off with something that did not come from the dollar store. And um, again, every now and again, if I see a TV series that I don't have that I really liked, even if it's not on Blu-ray, I'm going to grab it. And I managed to get a hold of the first season of Carnival, which is a really interesting, fun, strange TV show. If you've never seen this from HBO and it's got all kinds of interesting stuff in there. Nick Stahl before whatever happened to him happened. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, what Clancy Brown is in there. I, I, there's a lot of talk about what happened. He kind of apparently went a little nuts and just, I don't know, kind of wandered off the deep end. I'm not even sure if he's alive or not. I have no idea. But it's a shame because for a while there, he was kind of a really cool, intense actor. And uh, I don't know. Something kind of must have happened. But he was really, really good in Carnival. I don't know if you've ever seen it. But it's a pretty I, interesting show. I know about it. But um, I think he just kind of burned out from it, maybe. I mean. It's possible. It happens. Um, so next, we're going to go into some of the other dollar store movies. First one we have here is a movie called Dark Fields. Okay. And uh, that is a Skylight Films with Jenna Scott, Lindsay Day, and Brian Austin Jr. And it um, directed by Mark McNabb and Alan Randall. I don't know who they are, but um, this uh, looks kind of interesting. So we'll check that out. Next one is a movie called Feral. Okay, and, uh, I've seen that. I think I might even have that. Oh, Okay. So, yeah, Scott Taylor Compton and Olivia Lucardi, directed by Mark yeah. H. Young. So it's some kind of a uh, uh, zombie virus thing that's going around. Yeah, nice. Next, we have another uh, three-peat. So we have The Killing House. And then bundled with it, we have a movie called Headhunter, The Assessment Weekend, and Curtains with John Vernon and Samantha Agar. Nice. So that could be interesting. See what happens there. Next, we have a movie called Heebie Jeebies. I don't know if you know that one. I, I've um, heard, I think I've heard of it somewhere. Maybe I saw the cover. Yeah, I, I do not recognize anybody in this, but uh, sounds kind of like see. Jeepers Creepers, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which I see out there all the time, but I just. I don't know. I just can't get myself to buy any of them. I just uh, don't, you know, don't I, um, yeah, I know, you know, we know. All, yeah. We don't need to get in. That. Yeah, yeah. 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 No need to rehash all that. Yeah. Um, let's see. Next we have a movie called birthright. That's a full moon movie. 
Oh, and nice. that's got Natalie Sutherland, Danny Wolski, Laurie Nadeville, Brink Stevens, Larry Dirk, Julie Strain, oh, Jesus. and Sky Stafford. That's... Written and directed by Devin Hamilton. And it's a uh, it's a magic like teenage movie, teenage witch uh, kind of flick. Yeah, witch witchcraft movie. Okay. And let's see here next, since we're in that uh, genre, we have Seven Deadly Sins. And uh, this is a brain damaged film, and it stars Tanya Dempsey with Tracy Kreisner, Joe Miles, Matt Emery, and it is directed by Garrett Clancy. Nice, I love so, Tanya Dempsey. Yeah, she's cool, and I like brain damage. They have some interesting stuff. Uh, next, we have a movie that actually I have already seen, but it was a lot of fun, so I managed to get it again, and it is. Vampires versus Zombies. Nice. Who? And that is uh, directed by Vince D'Amato. And it's got, oh gosh, all kinds of people in there. C.S. Monroe, Brink Stevens is in there, as she is in nice. so many movies. <laughs> um, but gotta love vampire movies. Next, we have a four pack. Four movies, and the, the collection is called Bite Me. But the movies that are in there, check this out. Um, First one is called Rock and Roll Frankenstein, which I already have, but it's actually a lot of fun. Next, we have How to Slay a Vampire. Number three is called Blood Slaves of the Vampire Wolf, which is the movie I really, really wanted because who the hell would not want a movie called that? You know? Right. And then finally is Sorority House Vampires from Hell. Nice. So there you go. And that's Brentwood Home Entertainment, another mark of quality. <laughs> Let's see here. So then we have two other movies I think you're going to enjoy. Uh, remember I told you I had some movies from our buddy Charles E. Cullen coming to see me. Oh, God, and really? They finally, they finally arrived. And uh, the first one is The South Will Rise Again, I which I believe is a Confederate zombie movie. Nice. So that should be fun. Can't wait to watch that. And then the second one, let's see here, is called Super Badass. Nice. And let's see. It's actually it was put up by Sub Rosa Studios, which is interesting. But it's it's Charles Cullen, the man himself. And there's a special appearance by the puppet man. So it looks like there's going to be puppets in there, too. Nice. So, you know, I love that. Next, we're getting into some of the really fun ones that I've been kind of waiting to get my hands on for a while. This is one, I don't know, this is, you might know this one, maybe, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. It's a full moon movie. Have you ever heard of a movie called Pet Shop? Yes. I haven't seen yeah, it, this but I, I know came it. This kind of came out around E.T. time. It was kind of like the full moon version of E.T. Not E.T., um, um, Gremlins. You know, the, whatever the one was with the little, little monsters that you're not supposed yeah. to feed. You know, it's that kind of a thing. Yeah, you know, except it's their version, of course. And, um, like just they, like Ghoulies uh, was their version as well, you know, munchies I mean. and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, next, we have a movie called The Brotherhood of Satan, uh, which was directed by Bernard McAl McAventy with uh, Struther Martin and LQ Jones, and uh, this is supposed to be a really kind of weird. Uh, witchcraft slash devil worship kind of film mm -hmm. last two we have we have one that i know is going to be on indie film cafe shriek of the sasquatch uh okay so funny funny uh we were actually supposed to watch that uh nice. last uh it was either last friday or the friday before me and eric sputic when he got me the stuff uh, but unfortunately, things happened. We weren't able to, but we watched uh, we watched one of the Man Eaters movies instead, so it worked out. But I but next time he comes over, we're watching Shriek of the Sasquatch because that's a uh, that's a uh, um, a Stephen. Um, ah, my brain is like messing up today. Steve Sessions. Steve Sessions movie, and it's also Sarah French. So really excited mm -hmm. about yeah, that, and Sarah she's French. she's wonderful in that movie from what I and remember seeing. Contains nudity, sexual situations, and Bigfoot terror. Uh, no Bigfoot nudity? <laughs> Let's hope so. 
And then finally, 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 we have Zombarella's nice. uh, House of Horrors with a special audio commentary with director Tony Masiello. And it's got all kinds of stuff in here, hot deleted scenes and all kinds of stuff from our friends over at sovhard.com. And uh, this is directed we'll leave the by... link. We'll leave a link at the bottom so you yes, guys can yes, check yes. it out because we love those guys and we want Absolutely. everybody to support them. Absolutely. Tony, Tony's been on uh, Indie Film Cafe before doing like reviews with me. So I adore Tony and I'm actually going to hope to to have him back on, you know. Outstanding. And if you get the chance, definitely go to SOV Hars. They got all kinds of really great stuff. Check it out. You won't go wrong. And uh, yeah, tell them the Moo Cow sent you. All right, Mr. Moody, your last group. All right. Okay. I'm getting old, man. I'm starting to like, woo. Um, uh, all right. Do, 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 do. Uh, all right. So the first one I want to talk about is the movie that we I was mentioning earlier that Michael Hoffman was not happy with or whatever, right? You know, and everything. And it was his first film and he kind of let, or his first like feature slasher thing, you know, and he was kind of let the producers take over and take charge of it, you know, kind of thing instead of, you know, whatever. But uh, so he's not really too happy with it, but I got it at Dark Delicacies, which I love. I love them and to death. And I saw it and I was like, Michael's movie, I got to pick it up. Then I found out he wasn't too big of a fan, but he does want to send me like his alternate opening and stuff like that. So I can kind of see what he originally wanted to do with it, you know, and, and compare and contrast. But uh, so the first one is Sigma Die. So it is a sorority, uh, sorority slasher movie starring Reggie Bannister and our favorite actress who's in everything, Brink Stevens, and the actor we just freaking interviewed, Joe Estevez. Yes. And Ali Hartman is in it too. So there you go. It is a, uh, you know, it is a interesting movie. I'm just kind of sad that he's not a huge fan of it or whatever, but I was, Hey, like, I'm happy to have all his films, you know, or whatever, you know, and I sure, hope, sure. I hope to get more, uh, later. And Joe Estevez, you rock my friend. So, uh, also at dark delicacies, I decided to get, uh, this movie that, uh, we've entered, well, we've reviewed snow shark. And uh, so I had to get the second movie that he did uh, that I know of, uh, uh, Legend of Six Fingers. It's another Bigfoot movie. It's like a, you know, docu Bigfoot movie, kind of like, you know, a lot of them are, you know. Um, nice. but yeah, it's got Deborah Sean and Lynn Lowry and uh, Andrew Elias, who I think works with. Uh, Speaking of actresses that I'll, I'll watch just about anything that they're in it, Deborah Sean. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's wonderful. Another movie I got, well, okay. So I also bought this online. I think I bought it online, which is Robert, because I need oh. all the Robert movies. Uh, once again, if I can complete stuff, I will. And I've already owned like two or three of them. I think two before. So I got this, Robert, the original Robert. Then I also got Robert Reborn, you know, which I got at... Um, uh, dark delicacies and i saw it i mean it was a little bit more expensive than what i could probably get on amazon but i was like you know it was my birthday money and i wanted to kind of blow it on you know a bunch of crappy dvds and uh and you know what the robber movies are fun you know and just kind of goofy and not very you know and i like uh, haunted doll movies i mean that's kind of a creepy doll so whatever I'll all watch dolls all are creepy i know um, another one is uh, Lance Henriks. Okay, these are all going to be coming up uh, for a good while. I think all these are ITN movies, you know. So I got an ITN collection, and I'm actually going to do a video uh, about all my ITN movies, all my uh, all of them, and talk about all of them and everything. Uh, so this one's got Lance Henriksen, D. Wallace, Justin uh, Gear, and Kevin Sorbo. And that is This Old Machine. And I got it from Eric Spudick. Oh. But I was like, sweet. That sounds kind of fun. I don't know. Uh, and then, of course, these are ITN as well. And I got one of them. I bought one of them on at Walmart, which was their sequel. And I had to buy the original. 
if I'm going to have the sequel, I got to have the original. So I bought it on Amazon. So I got both of them. But it's the Bad Nun, you know? Um, I have Bad Nun. None, none, exploitation movies are always fun. You have like, a ton of those, I think. I have, a, yeah, a bunch. And then Bad Nun, Dudley Vows. So the sequel. I don't have that one. Yeah. Uh, you can buy it at Amazon or uh, Walmart for 10 bucks. I mean, is it worth it? Probably not, but it's, it looks fun, you know, and goofy. Uh, then, speaking of Vikings from earlier, Viking War, an actual movie called Viking War. That's a nice. real movie. It's not a documentary. So, um, What's it about? I think it's about a war with Vikings. I'm not <laughs> sure. It says the Saxons are in grave danger. A group of crazed Vikings called the Berserkers are invading villages and ripping people to shreds. When Rolf, the son of the Berserkers, uh, le a leader re uh, rebels against their barbaric ways, he sets off to fight against the family and to save the Saxon village and their people. So no puppets. Yeah. No puppets, as far as I know. Uh, so uh, John Ward sent me a movie because I was sad. I could never find this at the Dollar Tree. This is really funny. So I could never find this at the Dollar Trees around me. Then I went to another Dollar Tree that's like, you know, maybe 10 minutes away. And I found found it. So I, I, I didn't need him to send me it, but I'm glad he did. I'm very grateful he did, which is Lake Fear 2. Oh, that's the one you can never get. I have the first one. I have the third one. It's really hard to get the second one. I don't understand why. Look, I will. I if I go back to that Dollar Tree and, I, and it's still there, I will. I will send it to you. Thank so, you. Thank you, know, you. I will pay it forward since Yay. John did that to me. So because it's so frustrating. I, I know. Like if you got the first one, if you got the second one, you know, why not? Right. So there you go. Speaking of first and second, uh, so I couldn't find the, uh, I found the second one, and then later I found the first one, so thankfully I was able to do it for this haul, but straight out of Oakland, it looks like a gang movie, right? Yeah. And then straight out of Oakland too. <laughs> so, yeah, like me. Because there were a lot of unanswered questions in the first one. I guess so. I don't know, but we'll see. <laughs> We'll see. I'll, I'll be like, wait, a straight out of Oakland Monk. I'll be like, straight out of Oakland 1. I'll be like, thank God they made a sequel, so now I'll know. <laughs> um, so the next one is a movie that has I swear to God, that's okay, it's Sherry. That looked like Shart for a second. I was like, somebody named Shart? <laughs> it's really small print. So, um, but Sherry Shattuck, Tony Todd, Bill O'Burst Jr., and mm, God, this is so fucking small of writing. Oh, um, yeah, I don't. Eric Edabari or something. Uh, Scream at the Devil, probably another Exorcism movie. Kind of thing. Yeah, I think I saw that at one of the one of the stores. I didn't get it though. Yeah, it's a Dollar Tree tree movie. Um, or maybe I did. I forget. And then no, we. I think I got that from Eric. I got that from Eric. Um. And then another one I got from Eric is Astro. And I've seen this movie. And um, so Max Wassa uh, produced and acted in this. And, uh, you know, and she had told me to watch it, you know. And actually a couple people that are going to be in Supernatural Assassins are in this film. So I'm really excited. Cool. Yeah. So I, I watched it and, I, and I, I dug it, you know. So when I saw that Eric had a copy of it, I was like, yeah, I'm going to want to grab that because I'll want a copy of it and everything. Um, it's uh, it's pretty decent it's got some big it's got some big names in it um god damn these things are so small gary daniels uh lewis mandelar uh and uh well max wasa and dominique swain and uh, michael pere i think that's how you say his name you know so yeah so dominique swain's another one i haven't heard much in the last 20 years she's been doing a lot of lifetime movies with david dakota so i mean you know she's in the wrong wrong babysitter wrong you know teacher wrong student wrong whatever movies but uh so yeah astro um actually interviewed uh dominique once you know she's nice. really sweet and last but probably least actually um is a movie that is a itn film uh doesn't have anybody big in it uh, it does not have anybody big. It feels like it's a movie that should star Eric Roberts, but it doesn't. It's called Dog Napped. <laughs> you know, 
So it's just I saw this at the, the this, you know, like this would be. I was Lenore about to movie. say that sounds like a Lenore movie. Yeah. Yeah. So it's by the way, uh, she contacted me. Yeah. She contacted me. She got into graduate school at uh, uh, University of North Carolina in Raleigh. Cool. Congratulations to her. That's awesome. Yeah. Give me PhD. A that's it. That's all my movies. That's all your movies. We're done, right? We're done. All right. Um, and we're going to go into the, some updates. So um, so today we launched the website for sickflickproductions.com and uh, Indie Film Cafe is on there a little bit. Um, not too much, just to let people know we are connected, you know, but I um, have the link to your page um, that you run. And I've and got the links you know, from Mindy Film Cafe and Sexploitation Sleaze Cast and everything else linked back to oh. Sick Flick. So good. it all works. Good. Yes, good. Perfect. Um, so yeah, so we got that going on. And um, uh, I mean, uh, February is going to be sort of a, uh, I, I don't, it's just going to be kind of a precursor to, you know, uh, to March. March is going to be the bigger, the big, the big, uh, month you know where we're uh, going to be majorly busy getting ready to shoot two short films back to back and I mean stuff like that so I mean we're just I mean and so February is probably going to be pretty busy just just getting things ready for that but aside from that um, and the podcasts and stuff goes um, things are going to be a little off not like completely the only ones that are going to be completely on schedule for sure are the indie film cafe uh mondays you know episodes and everything and and uh sexploitation sleaze cast uh will probably be exactly you know everything else might be a little off uh won't be on the same exact time as the last time and we did that on saturday you know uh, in uh january too so uh it's just a matter of like we're so busy i mean i was so busy getting the website going you know, and that took actually that took like two or three weeks to just like put all the content in there and get things going and announce, you know, things that are happening with it. You know what I mean? Like, it's just a lot of work that went into just getting everything prepped and ready. So sure, sure, sure. I mean, we should have had our first episode of Blue Cheese come out in January, but because I was so busy, I just just couldn't get to it. So it is coming out in February. So keep an eye out for that. Perfect. Um, and then really that's not much, there's not much else going on, you know, um, as far as updates go, like I said, just check the sickflickproductions.com page, um, chat with us in the, um, you know, in the, like we have the echo Lake universe, uh, group, you know, that's actually almost got a thousand for, like a for like a little over a month that's pretty damn good so i'm pretty pretty excited about that and got some really cool announcements going on with that stuff so i mean and we should have some short reviews and things coming out too right yes we got short reviews uh if you're part of our patreon we uh, once again it's going to be a second i've got to i've got to upload the um the one we did the patreon only one so it will come up uh this week it'll be up this week probably on wednesday or thursday so um, maybe earlier if I can, if I can, but. And you know. while I've got you, I might as well tell you as I'm telling everybody else, I managed to get uh, Miss Lila and Bobby to agree to do a Patreon only movie uh, for IFC, which we're going to do. And I'm going to send you, I'm not going to tell you what the movie is, but I think huh. you'll uh, find it uh, very interesting. So are they going to record it or are you recording it? We're both going to do it. They're going to watch the movie. I'm going to watch the movie. Oh no, I'm saying you're. Both- are you going to record it on, are you going to record it on your zoom? Or are you going to? Yeah. Okay, cool. Good luck on that. That's fun. That'll be fun. I, I, I like, I, I love that you're working with Lila and Bobby on this stuff. So uh, I adore them um, completely. Um, she was supposed to be with us on the Joe Estevez thing. And unfortunately yeah. things just didn't work out and we missed her and we love her. So she'll be, we'll, we'll get another chance to uh, interview him again. Absolutely. He was very, I mean, good God. He, he loved chatting with us. So, uh, and that's, that's coming out Friday. I definitely, Friday. anybody who's a fan or a fan of just B movies in general, wait till you hear this interview with Joe Estevez. He was just such a nice guy. He had all kinds of great and interesting things to say. He talks about his craft. He talks about all, all the, the things that he's gotten involved with. He talks about being involved with, with Conrad Brooks and with, um, you know, with, uh, uh, oh gosh, uh, Donald G. Jackson, name. Donald G. Jackson and, 
all kinds of people. It's just, it's just a fabulous, fabulous interview. Robert Zadar, he adored, you know, so you loved working with him and uh, it was just, it was great. I mean, him, he's just one of those people that, Class uh, act. yeah. And he was, uh, so our, for our first IC back in, you know, for this year, I mean, I think that's a good way to kick off. Um, and I'm glad that he was our first. Uh, for and we, we had a nice little surprise. His wife actually joined us for a little bit, which was cool. So we got two for the price of one. Exactly. It was really, she was really sweet. I liked her. I like, I like everybody that uh, we've interviewed really like there hasn't been anybody that so far, like everybody's so very sweet about their movies and they know that we love them. I mean, we might, we might have like the little stinkometer or we might say whatever, but we love them, you know, like oh, these yeah. are just oh, stuff yeah. that we just enjoy. And these are um, all movies that not only that we love, but we, we try to put a spotlight on them just like in the, 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 you know, in, in the video we talk about, because we don't want them to fade into obscurity. They, they don't exactly. deserve it. So, Whew. and he seemed pretty happy that we were doing that. So there yeah. you go. Yeah. He was, he was very happy. He was very sweet. Um, so it was really nice to interview him. He's kind of a person I wanted to have on my bucket list of people to interview um, at least, you know, if not work with, I'd love to work with him one day. Uh, right. And a lot of my friends say, uh, like Michael Hoffman worked with them, Michael Marino worked with them. A lot of my friends have said that he's just a complete and total professional. Uh, my other friend, another friend, Michael, uh, Michael Charon, God, he's worked with a lot of Michaels um, that I'm friends with. You know, so I said that he worked on uh, Untitled Horror Comedy. That was the movie that he made. And, uh, um, you know, and, and said that Joe was just the easiest person to work with. You know, well, I tell you what, man, if we manage to actually get to work with him, I'm going to get him to sign my copy of Roller Gator because how awesome would that be? You've got to like that's that's got to be the thing, you know. Um, so, yeah, uh, you know, uh, who else like what else is going on? I'm trying to think of updates. The really? only other thing I wanted to mention about that is, unfortunately, not even he knew where to find Sandra Shuker. She's out there. I'm going to find her. She can't hide in Canada forever. I'm going to find her. We're going to interview her. Well, I think I'm she's in you. L.A., but you know, whatever. All right. <laughs> you know, um, you keep doing what you're doing, bro. Um, but yeah, so it, like, uh, as far as updates go, yeah, just check sickflickproductions.com. We'll have more information on the page. Uh, right now, I think there's a lot of content already, you know, to start with. So, I mean, that's what I want. I didn't want it to be completely empty, you know, but there will be like, there'll be some more added stuff to it. And it's going to, I mean, I think like everything looks great so far. So um, I'm pretty, pretty happy with it. Yeah, it's neat. It's got a lot of different things. It's got all the projects, but more importantly, it's got, you know, characters and uh, they're all grouped into different groups, which is cool. And um, I assume as time goes on, we'll be filling that out as well and talking it's, about the different towns. Even just this week, I'm going to do that. Like I yeah. have plans for this week. I just, I mean, we've got so many people cast in all the supernatural assassin characters and right. stuff that we just, I haven't even put on there yet, but I do plan to. So I really hope people don't write to me and go, Hey, why am I not put up there? I'm like, right. <laughs> it just takes a little bit of time to like, I mean, not just, because I'm not even just just putting the characters up there, but I'm actually giving them a little bit of their backstory, you right, know, right. who they're who, who they're because this this isn't just like one movie or two movies. This is the whole universe that's populated with all the different characters, and you can see how they all intertwine and everything. And um, it's very it's going to be very very in depth and very very cool. And uh, I think yeah. the more you 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 look into it, the more interested people are going to be. We're going to try so hard to do some more like uh, like community building stuff, you know, mm -hmm. things that people who if people want to come on board and do stuff for us and and cosplay our characters, that would be freaking awesome one day, you know, like. And I would love to do some uh, some dramatic uh, podcasts with uh, some of our characters and just oh, that, have them. That, that would be a perfect place for them. Yeah. So it's, it's, that's going to happen. It's just give us some, give us a few months to really kick things into gear. Uh, we, like nice. I said, we're, we're shooting the, uh, we're shooting the uh, uh, two short films back to back. So uh, once that's, once that's done, you know, I can kind of more concentrate on some other stuff, you know um, there's just a lot going on right now. And, and we, we love it. Um, uh, we're very happy. I'm uh, I, I can't wait so okay um i guess that's it thank you guys um 
check back. Uh, like I said, keep checking indiefilmcafe.podbean.com, indiefilmcafe.reviews, uh, patreon.com backslash indiefilmcafe if you want to help us out. Please. Uh, even throw a buck in there. That's fine. Uh, buck will get you a, fr- a free uh, download of a, a podcast. Uh, you know, I just have to, <laughs> I just have to get it done. And uh, you'll be getting Patreon only stuff that nobody else is going to hear. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. And we still got to do one for March. I don't know if you've done that yet or not, you know? Um, so I, I think I have to do, that. I don't know. We'll figure something out. So, all right. Well, thank you guys so much. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, check out the links below and let us know what you guys think and uh, tell us what you got from the Dollar Tree. Cause that's what we want to know uh, so that we can try to find them too. All right. Well, thank you guys. Thank you very much. We will see you on the flip side. Bye. Bye.